This is a 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8 lens from Canon. This lens has been on my wish list for as long as I can remember. Even before I owned a DSLR, I wanted this lens. I knew I wanted it, um, but for the longest time, it was just a little bit out of my price range, just too much for what I needed. But a few months ago, I was lucky enough to finally be able to justify spending the money on this lens. After owning it for a few months, um, almost a year at this point, I want to go back and ask, was this lens worth it? So let's start off with some of the things I don't like about this lens. And when I say I don't like, it's not like it's the end of the world. They're just things that I don't personally care for. One of the things I imagine everybody won't care for is the price tag on this lens. This is the RF version, meaning it um, mounts up to the newest line of Canon mirrorless cameras like the R6 I'm filming on right now. And if you're buying it for an RF mount, it's gonna run you about three grand. When it comes to low f-stop zoom lenses, that's par for the course. Those are just gonna be very expensive because of the glass and the materials required to construct that lens. It's just gonna be expensive and that's to be expected. But a $3,000 price tag is still no small order when it comes to camera gear. That's not a necessity necessarily for most people, so it's an expensive lens. Another thing about it is that the lens is big and the lens is heavy. This thing weighs 2.6 pounds, which doesn't sound like much, but when it's on your shoulders and camera bag all day, you'll feel it. It's You'll know it's there when it's in your camera bag. So those are sort of understood and obvious drawbacks to this lens. It's expensive and it's heavy. My biggest complaint with this lens, and it sounds like a menial nitpicky complaint, but it really is terrible, is this rear lens cover. This is the worst lens cover I have ever used in my entire life because it only lines up to twist on in one spot. So you have to be looking at the lens to put this rear lens cover on or you're gonna miss it and it's go, you're gonna go on crooked or something or you're gonna have to take it back off and try to put it on again. It is a nightmare, especially if you're trying to move fast, like for a wedding trying to switch lenses, don't even try. You're, you're gonna miss it every time unless you're looking at the lens, which again, I know that sounds nitpicky, but for somebody that does event photography or quick moving stuff, you need as little downtime as possible with a cam without a lens on your camera. And this rear lens cover adds a lot of downtime just because you have to stop and take a second to look at making sure you're lining up the lens cover right. It's a nightmare. I hate it. I wish they would do it like their previous rear lens covers where they line up in about three spots or like the Sigma 85 millimeter, they line up in three spots. It's super easy. You can put it on without looking because you'll just, it'll twist on. If you twist for long enough, it'll drop into one of those notches and it'll twist on. It's great. As I mentioned before, I didn't buy this lens for the longest time, even though I wanted it because there was just never a reason to buy it. A lot of people say this is part of the holy trinity of lenses, uh, 16 to 35, 24 to 70, and a 70 to 200. And I would agree with them. It's, I mean, it allows you to cover large range of focal lengths and that's very valuable. But a 70 to 200 may not be something that you need in your camera bag. I bought this lens because I have a good deal of weddings coming up this year and for a wedding, you need the variable focal length to be able to get all the shots necessary to a wedding shoot. Um, you need to be able to move around the sanctuary or the venue and shoot at different focal lengths. That's necessary. You need something like this so you can get close up to the bride and groom, family members, etc. Plenty of people, I'm sure, make do without a 70 to 200 in wedding photography, but I was shooting enough weddings that I could finally justify buying this and it's been an extremely useful lens in plenty of other circumstances. But my point is, this may not be something you need and it's a hefty enough price tag that you need to think about whether or not it's something you need. I don't think that's necessarily a drawback to the lens, but it's something to think about when considering whether or not buying this lens is gonna be worth it. Okay, we've discussed what I don't like about this lens or why it may not be worth it. Um, now let's talk about what I really like about this lens because there's a reason I've wanted it for so long. This lens specifically holds a little bit of nostalgic value for me, not the RF version. The EF version is sort of what I um, have fond memories of. It was the first lens I ever used on a DSLR. I was borrowing somebody's camera and that's what they had on it. 
and I just sort of became attached to the lens immediately. It was exactly what I wanted. It was the focal length I wanted. Everything looked great. It was also the first low f-stop lens I used. And 2.8 is arguably not a low f-stop. It, it's decently low. It's it, You begin to get into low f-stops at 2.8, but this was the first lens that I had ever used that wasn't f4. So the depth of field was amazing. The compression that you'll get when shooting at higher focal lengths is amazing. It just, I fell in love with this lens because it was the first one I shot with. So I've always wanted to have my own because I have such a special attachment to the lens from my early days of photography. Now, as I mentioned, it's part of the Holy Trinity of lenses and it's called that for a reason. The Holy Trinity is a 16 to 35, a 24 to 70, and then a 70 to 200. And this helps you lock in those farther away subjects. It helps sort of complete that necessary range of focal lengths from 16 all the way up to 200. 70 to 200 is an extremely diverse focal length. 70 millimeters to 105 millimeters is really where um, you get the best proportions on a human face and so you're able to do really fantastic portraits with this lens because you can go from 70 to 105. You're in that focal length sweet spot for portraits. And then you have another 95 millimeters to work with if you got wildlife far away, you're trying to shoot sports or um, an automotive event, any kind of event this lens is going to shine. It allows you to get in people's faces without getting in people's faces. You can get up close, get emotion, um, get a tight compressed frame, but also not be a bother to people. So buying this lens, I went for the more expensive RF mount version because I wanted to future proof my setup a little bit. Um, Canon's cameras nowadays, the, their most recent releases have all been this RF mount. With a lens as big of an investment as the 70 to 200, I wanted to make sure that I could keep it around and keep it and it stay up to date for the longest possible time. So by buying the RF version, I'm sort of future proofing my camera setup, even though the EF mount would have been a little bit cheaper and still would have done exactly what I needed it to. Along with the focal length being a very diverse focal length range, this lens is very fast. Now what do I mean by fast? <laughs> fast is what we say when a lens can drop down to a low f-stop like 2.8 or below. And this is a 70 to 200 f 2.8. So its f-stop stays 2.8 all the way through the range of focal length. So your lowest f-stop on this lens is going to be f2.8, allowing some great depth of field. That low f-stop coupled with the compression you gain from higher focal lengths is really going to help you pull your subject off the background and create a photo that just looks fantastic. And one final thing when it comes to this lens that may or may not be true, but it feels like it's true. When you have this lens on your camera and you roll up to an event, or you come to a shoot, you look professional. I'm a huge fan of the Nifty 50, the Canon 50 millimeter f1.8. It's a tiny lens. And if you come to a shoot with just a 50 millimeter, like nobody's gonna take you seriously. Nobody's gonna think you know what you're doing. But if you come to a shoot with this lens on your camera, you're gonna look like you know what you're doing. People are gonna take you seriously. Now, is that a reason to buy this lens? No, not at all. It's just a bonus of this lens. It's so beefy, it makes a statement and it looks professional. If I taught you something you didn't know or explained something you thought you knew, please let me know. I'd love to hear about it. If you've got any questions or you've been thinking about buying the 70 to 200 yourself, let me know. I'd love to talk to you about it, give you some more in-depth thought process when it came to me buying this lens. I think that's about it. Like, subscribe, and I'll catch you later.